All right. Are we in the room? I believe we are streaming live. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. Welcome, welcome, Facebook. I want to give everybody just a minute before we get started here. And I'm going to share it on my personal page. Amen. Amen. So again, welcome. Thank you for those of you that are uh, logged into Zoom. Uh, definitely appreciate you. I understand uh, probably more than most <laughs> that uh, Zoom fatigue is a real thing, you know. <laughs> and uh, But definitely appreciate uh, you all enduring because at the end of the day, this is what we have right now, and 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 I'm praying for when we could come together and and uh, you know all together in one place. But uh, at the end of the day, you know, however I can get you, however I can see you, you know, I will be satisfied. So uh, thank you again for those of you that are uh, that are tuned in to the Zoom. Uh, thank you. I see some of you that are tuned in uh, on Facebook. I see uh, Elder Leonard, Marshanique. Uh, my brother Joshua, God bless you. I see the Martin family on Zoom, uh, Minister Eva and Prophet Yolanda's on Zoom. And I want to encourage as many people as possible that can get on Zoom to come on Zoom. It's just, it just hits you differently <laughs> when you're on Zoom, when we can talk and we can see each other together. Now, if you're in a place where you, you can't do it safely, or maybe like, you know what, I ain't got my hair on right, you know, it's all good. We family. <laughs> Listen, I'm not going to talk about nobody's hair. Look at my hair. I ain't going to talk about nobody's hair. You, you got your ponytail right, Minister Brikita. I got, you know, I got mine right for right now, but you know with these locks, it's only a matter of time. These locks are going to get frizzy and everything else, but you know what? I'm, I'm excited. I love it. I'm loving the journey. God bless you all. God bless you. Thank you for being here. want you to know that uh, for those of you that are on Facebook, uh, that we will be monitoring the comments and the questions. And, and so you are not excluded from the participation. I, I wholly expect you and are and requesting that you participate uh, on, on Facebook because uh, a lot of things that we're going to be talking about tonight, um, I, it, this is, I don't want to be talking about theory, all right? Uh, I don't want to be talking about, I should say theory only. I want us to look into the application of this. Uh, so, but before we get started, again, welcome. And, and for those of you that are on Facebook, do me a favor and share this broadcast. Share this broadcast. Amen. Let somebody know that we are starting Bible study. God bless you, uh, Miss Ann. It's so good to, to, to see your icon from Las Vegas. Amen. I see the Martins are, are joining us on Facebook. Also, uh, uh, Ariel is watching on Facebook. Man, my brother Tony, Big T, what's going on, sir? <laughs> Man, that brother go way back to Heidelberg. Them were uh, BC days before Christ. <laughs> Amen. It's good to, good to see you. God bless you, Marshanique. Good evening, everyone. So thank you for being here. Um, so so let, let's let let's start, uh, really, Martins? <laughs> let, let's start off like this. Has everybody recovered from Sunday? Uh, Sunday, listen, sun, Sunday, I think, hit all of us, you know what I'm saying, like a kidney punch. And, and but one thing that I will say that I am so grateful uh, that we had our first virtual altar call after service and, and it's something that we're going to continue to do uh because I, I realized that you know what we all need prayer and, and and it makes a difference uh when you can come in and, and you can receive prayer from someone that one knows how to reach heaven and two they can pray with you in confidence and pray with you uh without all your business being out there and and so that's one of the things that um it's it's a, a feature that's new to us 
with those that can pray allows us to be able to uh with, without all your business being out there and, and uh, so can, uh mute uh, uh on zoom please mute to us all right gotcha all right so as as i was saying allows us to uh to be able to pray you know, um, and, and you have some some level of, of privacy, but still be able to be vulnerable and transparent uh, so that way we can deal with some things. So so it's something that for those of you that, that join us and follow us on Sundays that we're going to continue to do on Sundays is have uh, have our virtual altar call. All right. We are coming to the altar so that we can be altered by the spirit of God. Amen. God bless you, Sean Reeves. Welcome, welcome. So we started and we're talking on this Wednesday night and on the Wednesday nights for this month on a series we're calling Homeschool. Now, this is a little bit different because we're, we're, we're kind of, we have one series that we're doing on Sunday mornings called The Kingdom Family, where we're going in much deeper to the role of the father, the role of the mother. Uh, this Sunday, uh, Pastor Martin is, is going to uh, to be ministering on the role of the son slash brother. And then the last Sunday of the month, we're going to talk about the role of the daughter slash sister. And, and on Wednesdays, we're doing a series called Homeschool, where we're going to be really looking at this month, the gifts of the spirit. Next month, the fruit of the spirit. And, and the, here's, here's why. Um, we are going back to reestablish some things that have really been put on the, as far as the mandate of the church, but biblically speaking is the responsibility of families. Uh-huh. So when we look at the gifts of the spirit, the gifts of the spirit are, is, is a topic that the church should confirm and not necessarily initiate. I am a firm believer that the gifts of the spirit, that you should learn those things in your private study at home, that you should be prophesying those things over your kids, that, the, you know, that the introduction of Christ should not happen on a Sunday morning. According to Deuteronomy chapter six, he says that as we're walking through the day, as we're sitting on our beds at night throughout the day, uh, we should be uh, re rehearsing and, and uh, reinforcing the law of God, the word of God in our households, if it's going to be established. And, and so we, we had Pastor Cedric Johnson, which wrecked us in an in a introduction to the gifts of the Spirit. And then last week, Minister Eva, uh, uh, she blessed us in, the, in our uh, conversation on the communication gifts or the speaking gifts. And so if you missed that, I want to encourage you to go back. Uh, you can see it here on our Facebook page, or I would really encourage you to go to our YouTube page. All right. Uh, we have done a lot to organize the messages by series on our YouTube channel. So, so look us up on YouTube and uh, we would love uh, uh, to have you a part of our online family. So tonight we're going to be talking about the revelation gifts the revelation gifts, all right? Um, so, so one of the things that I, I want you to get in mind, and, and I'll save this question for the end, so I'm giving you fair warning now, all right? I'm giving you fair warning now. Uh, I, I want to hear your participation. Uh, so the question I wanna ask you now, but we're going to address later, and for those of you that are on Facebook, feel free to share at any point in time. Do you know what gifts you have? Do you know what gifts you have? And do you have a desire for a gift beyond what you recognize in you? Uh, I am a firm believer uh, that the gifts are not optional, but they are necessary, uh, not just for the development of, of us as believers, but for the effectiveness of us in our calling. And, you know, uh, how, how many of you would sit under someone that's called to be a teacher but couldn't communicate the word clearly. You know, how many of you would, would go to a doctor uh, but has not finished all of their courses and their residency to, to be able to operate efficiently? You know, uh, so there's a level of confidence when, when we operate in something in excellence, as well as we receive some, uh, uh, you know, receive the ministry of someone that is effective in their gifts. It is our responsibility to be effective, to be excellent in what God has given us. Let me say that again. God gives it to us, but it's not for us, but it is our responsibility to be effective, excellent, proficient 
master the gifts that God has given us. Amen. Good evening, Sister Laquanda. So, so I, I want you to be thinking about that question, and we're going to revisit that at the end. So remind me if I, if I get caught up, uh, uh, remind me, I want to make sure that we had that conversation. What gifts do you have? Because we all have gifts. And, and let me just go ahead and put this out here real quick, that we're talking about the nine gifts uh, that are listed in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. You know, and so, so the prayer language is not one of the gifts of the spirit. It is, it is an attribute uh, uh, that is beneficial for the life of a believer. But when we're talking about the gift of tongues, and we already dealt with that last week, that is referring to the gift of diverse tongues or different tongues, not necessarily the prayer language. All right. So put a pen there. Let's get ready to get to work. All right. Uh, let's open up in prayer. Father, I thank you right now for who you are. I thank you, Father, for the word. I appreciate you right now for those that are here, even for those that are watching this, that will watch this on the replay on our YouTube channel and even here on Facebook. Let your word, Father God, break forth uh, and permeate, Lord God, our hearts. I pray that you would give us a hunger and a desire for more of you. Help us, Father God, to those things that we've allowed to lay dormant. I pray that there will be a stirring up tonight in the name of Jesus, uh, that we might, Lord God, press on and that we might go, Lord God, to achieve and to receive, Lord God, uh, the, the perfection of who you have called us to be. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Now, I have a lot of notes and a lot of scriptures for you tonight, so I hope you have your note-taking devices and, and, and you may need to go back in and for some of you watch this again, uh, but I, I want this to get right into it. If you have questions or comments, we would, you know, I'll make time for that as well throughout. And uh, for those of you that are watching me on Zoom, if you would hit that hand up emoji uh, so that I can see you because of the view, I'm not able to see everybody that's logged on. All right. Are we ready? Let's get to work. So uh, the revelation gifts. All right. So we looked at the, uh, the the speaking or the communication gifts last week, which refer to the gift of prophecy, the gift of the uh, of diverse tongues, and the gift of interpretation of tongues. Tonight we're dealing with the revelation gifts. The revelation gifts are the word of knowledge, the word of wisdom, and the discerning of spirits. All right. Let me say that again. The revelation gifts refer to the word of knowledge, the word of wisdom, and the discerning of spirits. And they're called revelation gifts because they reveal. Just like the speaking gifts or, or communication gifts are categorized in such a way because that's what they all have in common. They are all speaking gifts. Now, the reason why the word of knowledge, word of wisdom, and discerning of spirits is not also categorized in the speaking gifts is because you can receive revelation uh, through other means other than just communicating verbally. All right, what do you mean? Uh, you could receive a dream. God can, God can give you a, a word of knowledge through a dream, word of wisdom through a dream. All right. Uh, sometimes when he speaks to us, he would we, we would hear him speaking just as you hear me speaking audibly. We would hear uh, a, a word in our in our heart. And we also may feel a like sensing or see a picture uh, that is communicating to us. Uh, so so that's why also uh, the word of knowledge, word of wisdom and discerning the spirits is not lumped in with the communication gifts It's simply because you are not always authorized or obligated to speak what you see all right i think that's a big one just because god shows it to you does not mean you ought to put your mouth on it sometimes he shows you something sometimes he gives you a picture or a sensing or a word about something to direct you in prayer so, so everything is not meant to be communicated with the word of knowledge, word of wisdom, and discerning of spirits. All right. Uh, personally, as a pastor, I'm always going to be leery of somebody that always has a word. <laughs> you know, call it my own skepticism, but you're the only one God's speaking to, you know, every situation, you all, you got a word from, from about everybody. Your prayer life must be awesome. 
no shade, you know, but at the same time, just because God reveals something to you does not mean that you should be speaking it. All right. Amen. Amen. So let's get into uh, uh, principles of revelation. Principles of revelation. Uh, everything that we do or receive in God starts from a revelation. All right. Our obedience, sacrifice, ministry, uh, uh, everything that we get involved in, everything that we assume ourselves to be or we strive to be by faith, it is the, the starting point of that is a revelation. A revelation comes from the Greek word apocalypto, which means to be exposed or uncovered. All right, to be exposed or uncovered. When and I, I got to give credit to uh, to my father, Apostle Covington. He, he's 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 preached this so much. Uh, you know, I, I it's so it's so powerful every time he says it. But I, I want to share with you the example that he gave as well. Um, when you are exposed to something, then you become infected with, with what you've been exposed to. One of the reasons why we they're, they're still telling us to stay quarantined and to wear your mask and to stay physically distanced uh, six feet apart is because as long as you are there, then you limit your exposure to whatever symptoms or conditions the other person may have. Now, that is anti what we want in Christ. We want to draw closer to God. We want to go deeper in him because we, the, we want to be exposed to more of him. We want to be infected and impacted by what's in him. We want what's in him to be in us. We want what's on him to be on us. Uh, the same spirit that said that, that we want that to be in us. That, that's the Holy Spirit. Uh, we want to be exposed to those things. So the more we are exposed to him, uh, the, the more our perspective changes, the more our attitude changes, the more our decisions change, uh, the more, uh, uh, you know, it, how we live our life, it changes because of the exposure or the revelation. All right. So, so everything that we do, it starts with the revelation. You can't even come to Christ without a revelation. It, it, it does not matter what the situation was, but there had to be a revelation uh, of who he is. Uh, Hebrews chapter 11, verse six says like this, that uh, to come to God, you got to have faith. You got to have faith to even come to him because you got to believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So, so there's a level of faith that just empowers you and equips you just to approach him. Well, that faith is based on a revelation. You've got to know, you've got to be exposed of who God is. Uh, I, I believe that evangelism takes a it will, will receive a greater thrust and a greater level of effectiveness the more we are able to reveal Christ. And, and I think that uh, at, that evangelism uh, sometimes lacks because we reduce evangelism to a track and an invitation card. And when we re, when we rebuke when we reduce evangelism to a track. And, and, a, and, a, uh, and an invitation card to our church services, that's no different than any other club promoter, you know, putting that sign, putting that little card on your window, you know, while you in Walmart. It, it's no different than any other organization say, hey, come be a part of this, but there's no exposure to the reality of who he is. And, and so it is through the revelation gifts uh, that we're able to, here he is, reveal Christ. All right. So, so keep in mind with every one of these gifts, regardless of what gift you possess, and you do possess at least one, whether it is a speaking gift, a revelation gift, or a power gift, which we'll address next week, all of them have the motive uh, to reveal Christ. Now, if you are operating in your gift to monetize, if you're operating in your gift to build your brand, if you are operating in your gift 
to, to, you know, to get some type of exposure or to make your name great, then you are operating in your gift illegally and you are in, you are going to be in jeopardy of, of making yourself to be an idol. All right. And, and also causing others to come into a form of idolatry. So, so every one of the gifts should point and direct uh, you and them to Christ. All right. I got some scriptures for you. Uh, Galatians chapter one, verses 11 through 12. Galatians one, 11 through 12. Now you don't have to go there. Just write it down for your study. In the King James version, Paul says, but I certify you brethren that the gospel, which was preached of me is not after man, for I neither received it of man, neither was I taught it, but by revelation of Jesus Christ. By revelation of Jesus Christ, the gospel that I receive, the gospel that I teach, uh, it is received and it is given by revelation of Jesus Christ. Second Peter chapter one and verse three. Second Peter chapter one and verse three out of the King James, he says, according as his divine power hath given unto us, uh, that's you and I, all things that pertain unto life and godliness, here it is, through the knowledge of him that hath called us to glory and virtue. Uh, and, and then it goes on to say how we are to add to our faith and how we have to add, you know, just dip, level upon level that we might be effective as believers. But, but I want you to understand that the genesis of everything that is taking place, of the list that Peter gives, it happens through the knowledge of him. How do I know that I have it? It's through the knowledge of him. How do I receive what God has already given of uh, the things that I need that pertain to life and godliness? I have it through the knowledge of him. So the question is, how did we get this knowledge? We get this knowledge through revelation. All right. It's so important that we understand that. Now, now, uh, let me make sure this is clear. There's different ways that we receive information. You can read a book, like let's say the Bible. You can read the Bible and receive information. And you can learn facts, history. You can, you can read narrative. You can be able to track and trace uh, uh, genealogies, events, you can memorize quotes and because you have a head knowledge, you have an intellectual knowledge of God's word, but you can still miss God. One of the mission statements of the Carpenters Church is to educate, but not that you just be head knowledge, not that you just have head knowledge. It's not enough that you just know the Bible. You've got to know the God of the Bible. And the only way you can know the God of the Bible is that he reveals himself. Now, the, the good news is that we serve a God that does not want to play hide and seek with us. Well, you know, not the way we play it. Now, as a kid, it was our, our job to find the best hiding spot. And, and if I could find a hiding spot and you couldn't find me and you just gave up, Ali Ali oxen free, then that means I won. I was successful. But, but God told us in Proverbs uh, that it is the glory of God to conceal a matter, but the glory of kings to search it out. And so what it means is that even though he may be hidden from your intellect uh, directly so that you can't receive all of him in your own strength and knowledge, he is uh, someone that is accessible and he wants to be revealed and wants to be found by us. As a matter of fact, Jeremiah shares with us that uh, when we seek him, we shall find him when we seek him with our whole heart. Now that's so important uh, that we understand that because if, if he only resolved of uh, people to find him that could do it intellectually, then that will put some people in an advantage, but on the flip side, other people at a disadvantage. Uh, so, so he says, you know what? I'm gonna make sure that you can find me regardless of your level of education. Regardless, you don't need a college degree or a doctorate or a high school diploma to be able to find me. He said, the kingdom of heaven is as these little children. Suffer the children not to come unto me, for as such is the kingdom of God. So it's not a matter of your wits. 
your street smarts, your book smarts, what we receive from God is through revelation. So, so, so let's make it clear. Revelation is not about principles and ideas, uh, uh, but they are very directed. The revelation that we're talking about is the revelation of Jesus Christ. It is the revelation of Jesus Christ uh, that undergirds the operation of any of the gifts uh, that, that, that we see. Amen. Hey, what's going on, uh, uh, Calvin Lowry? Happy anniversary to you and your wife again. Uh, so, so again, it is, it is the revelation of Jesus Christ that is the fuel for everything that we do in God. As a matter of fact, uh, one of my favorite uh, anecdotes in the Bible uh, is found in John chapter 5, I believe somewhere around 30, verses 38 and 39, where Jesus is having a conversation with the Pharisees. And, and they were talking about um, trying, trying to really uh, uh, confirm their authority. And Jesus basically just told them, he said, listen, you read the scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life but they testify of me. And, and what he was really revealing to them is, is, is a principle that you can read the word of God and still miss God. You can read the word of God and gain a whole lot of head knowledge and can recite narratives and poetry and wisdom literature, but you miss the principle uh, of the word. The word of God from Genesis to Revelation is the story of the revelation of Jesus Christ. So, so I, I want to encourage you that when you are reading the word of God, that you're not just uh, getting involved in, the, in, a, in an exercise uh, as you would any any novel uh, that you would read today. Uh, it, it, this is not your Bible should not be on the same you know uh, same level as as any other New York Times bestseller. Because the Word of God is true, and, and the Word of God is is the primary source, the primary source that we receive the revelation of Jesus Christ. Amen. Um, now, once you have been exposed to something, now you have a responsibility concerning that. Now, now for some of you, that's good news. And for some of you, uh, you don't like to hear that. But revelation brings about responsibility. If you're taking notes, make sure you jot that down. Revelation uh, brings responsibility. And I believe that a lot of people uh, don't see or don't receive the revelation as much as God wants them to uh, because of two reasons. Number one, they were irresponsible with the last thing God showed them. Now, if, if God gave you a revelation and you didn't do anything with it, why would he, why would he give you another one? Because again, God is not going to reveal something to you just so you can say, oh, God showed me something. Wow, God gave me a dream. Oh my God, he spoke to me. No, he does that to prepare you. He does that because there is an assignment with what he's shown you. And if you find yourself irresponsible over what he has given you, if you bury that gift, if you bury that talent, if you bury that revelation, then, then because he understands the importance of it, you dis you 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 dis um what what's the word I'm looking for you um you you uh disqualify thank you Jesus you disqualify yourself from receiving the next he said I'm gonna give it to the one that's gonna do something with it uh, we we see that principle in Matthew chapter 25 so so you gotta be responsible over he's shown you and I believe that some of us don't see. Uh, as much as God wants us to see because of the way we treated the last thing that he revealed to us. And, and he's going to always start small. You know, he's not going to give you this grand vision of you taking over the city. No, he's going to start with something small and, and see if you're going to be responsible over the little things. Are you going to be faithful over a few things because your ability and your willingness to choose to be faithful over a few things is what qualifies you and positions you for promotion to become a ruler over much? Number two, 
uh, the reason why I believe people don't see the way they do, the way they, that God wants them to, is their rejection to see because of the comfort of their present. That I believe that there's some people that they were irresponsible for what they've seen before. And there's other people that they're comfortable where they are, so they don't want to see anything else. So, so inherently, they reject what God wants to show them. I, I, got, I got scripture for that. Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 18. What's going on, Brother Robert? God bless you, sir. Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 18. Uh, Paul is talking to the Ephesian church. He's saying, having the understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart. So, so really what's going on, uh, as, as you're reading, for those of you that are familiar with Ephesians chapter four, he starts off uh, by, by telling them, talking to them about, you know, he gives them the revelation of the fivefold ministry the responsibility that we have to be connected as a body and the revelation of the body. But then he flips it and he says, now you have a personal responsibility concerning your uh, concerning Christ and how you ought to live your life and how you ought to interact. And, and so he, he starts off by telling them, listen, there should be a difference between you as a, uh, as a Jew and you as a Gentile. But one thing that I love about this is he, if you notice, he redefines the term Jew and Gentile. At, at one point, Jew and Gentile were terms that defined your nationality. Uh, someone that was a Jew was born of Jewish descent. They could, they could point back their genealogy to Abraham, which was the, the father, the progenitor of the Israelite people. And then you have a Gentile, which was just any non-Jewish uh, non-Jewish a person. But here you see he begins to change the, the, the context of it. So now those that are considered Jews are people that are in relationship with God and a Gentile is someone that just does not. And, and so he says there, there's, there's, there's two different ways that we live based on what's been revealed to us. But he says, listen, I'm realizing something. And, and he says, that some of you, you have your understanding darkened. And because your understanding has been darkened, you have chosen to be alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart. Hey, my dad is on. What's going on, sir? So, so darkness is the Greek word skotizo, and blindness is the Greek word uh, porosis. And they both illustrate a stubborn person who rejects what they are being shown by covering their eyes. So, so, so really, here, here's the picture of what Paul is trying to say. He said, listen, here's the reason why some of you are having a hard time. The reason why you can't make the decision to take off the old man with this evil ways and put on this new man that is fashioned in Christ. He says, because when the revelation is, is coming to you, you're like this. You're, 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 you're stubborn and you're covering your eyes because you don't want to change. You're covering your eyes because you don't want to see. Because you know that what you see, you're going to be held responsible for. What you see will take away the excuses. And, and so when, we, when the excuses are taken away, then we have no choice to do it or otherwise we'll just be caught, we're just in rebellion because we know what's right to do and we're refusing to do it. But, but, but he, he's dealing with this now. He says, you don't have an out if you cover your eyes, if you just reject it. Um, it, it, it sounds like this in our context. Woo, that was a good word for so-and-so. Man, brother so-and-so should have been here to hear that word. No, God's speaking to you too. <laughs> and, and, and so when we refuse to accept and to acknowledge the relevancy of God's word and revelation to our life, this is what we look like to him. And it causes our hearts to be darkened, our understanding to be darkened, and our hearts to be blinded, which will then cause us to make decisions that will pull us away from him. And this is why for immature saints, when you sin, 
the last thing you want to do is read your Bible, pray, or go to church. Because you don't want to be reminded about the life of God that you just offended. You don't want to be reminded uh, uh, because those things, instead of bringing you in because of grace, it, it, it brings about a sense of guilt because of the culture that you may have been in. But, but thanks be unto God that I can say that we are creating a culture at the Carpenter's Church uh, where you can with, come on with your baggage. Come on with your mess because guess what? You are in good company. All of us are seeing and falling short of the glory of God. We all need his grace to make it from day to day. Amen. Uh, so, so none of us have a hell or a prison to put anybody in, even when your sin does not look like mine, even when your temptation does not look like mine. We are here. Those of you that are spiritual should, should, should bear up. Okay, I feel my help right there. Let me slow down. So, so revelation. And so, so that's the that's the idea that he is trying to show us. All right. Um, so, so, so let me pause right there because I, I, I said I feel my help. Any questions or comments? We're talking about the revelation gifts, but before we get into the gifts, I'm, I'm trying to set a foundation on the principles of revelation. So, so any questions or comments at this point? Amen. All right. All right. So let's keep going. Um, Matthew chapter seven, verses four and five. I told you I had a lot of scriptures for you today. So make sure you're taking these down. Matthew chapter seven, verses four and five. Jesus is saying, or how wilt thou say to thy brother, let me pull the moat or the speck out of thine eye, and behold, a beam is in thine own eye. He said, thou hypocrite, first cast out the beam out of thine own eye, and then shalt thou, here it is, see clearly, revelation, to cast out the moat out of thy brother's eye. Let me give you another principle of revelation. God is not going to reveal info to you about a person that you have an ought with, about a person that you are dealing with in unforgiveness or, or with a person that you are already suspicious of. The word of the Lord to you is get the speck out of your own eye. Amen, somebody. It's a principle. And, and so let, let's make this clear. If you say that you have a revelation with somebody that you are already suspicious of, have an ought with, or unresolved issues and unforgiveness, that re revelation did not come from heaven. It either came out of your own soul or it came from hell. There are three voices that will speak to you at any particular time. Holy Spirit, you, and the devil. <laughs> and you can always recognize two out of the three very easy. You can always recognize Holy Spirit because what he speaks is in line with God's word. You can trace it in the word. You can also uh, readily uh, recognize the voice of the devil because what he says will be opposite God's word. The tricky part is when you get involved. Because you flip-flop. When I'm talking about you, I'm talking about your soul. Now, I'm included in this too, my soul. My soul flip-flops uh, based on the situation to whatever is most convenient for me. Because the heart of man is inherently wicked and inherently selfish. So, so I got to make sure that, that anything that I think that I see Anything that I think that God is speaking to me, I must submit it to the word of God because I have to make sure that I don't cause chaos and collateral damage by speaking something that was not authorized by heaven. And it may be a good idea. It may even be in a, a favorable word. But if God has not authorized that word, then what you're doing is you're creating uh, an unfair expectation in the hearer 
and it's going to cause them to be disappointed in both you and God. And, and that's the issue with the, the prosperity gospel as, as we know it, because the prosperity gospel, as, as it's known, only gives one side of a coin. It only speaks one message. Now, let, uh, let us, let's be clear. There is an advantage in Christ. There is a prosperity in Christ. That prosperity is not always financial in nature, but there is an advantage. But if, if the only message is God's going to bless you with a new car, God's about to give you a new house, God's going to give you a new job, he's going to give you a new husband, or, or he's going to give you a wife, and, and, and you never deal with the character of a person, you never deal with the sin, and you never deal with, with the whole gospel, uh, I think that's where the, the term prosperity gospel comes into play, and also where you have people that are speaking out of their soul and not necessarily what's been authorized by God. Because God's going to speak the truth whether you like it or not. And he's not going to, he's not going to mold and shape his truth or his standard to fit your life or your context. But we have to lay down our life according to Romans 12 that we might not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of our mind. Because that's how we prove his good and acceptable and pleasing will. So, so we've got to be very careful of the source of what we see and the source of what we say. Get the speck out of your eye first. So what do I mean? You got to be careful to guard your eyes and your ears. All right. Um, listen, man, make sure you take note of that. Guard your eyes and your ears. People with revelation gifts are susceptible to pollution and demonic activity because their senses are open to what the Lord wants to show. And so since, there are, since their senses are open to what the Lord wants to show, if you do not guard your eyes or your ears, they don't automatically close because hell has something it wants to present to you. So, so you must guard your eyes, your ears, and I'll even throw in your heart uh, because uh, they can pervert the gifts. So, so, so here's some examples of things that you need to guard your heart, your eyes, and your ears from. Horoscopes. Horoscopes. Um, what is this, Virgo season? You know, my, my timeline be flooded. It's Virgo season. Turn up. It's Capricorn season. You got to be careful about them Aquarius. You got to watch out for the, hey, it's Aries season. It's, listen. Horoscopes will pollute you because horoscopes uh, have, a, have a way of giving you information and, and want to define your identity based on a source that is not submitted to God. So, so you got to be careful about horoscopes. Uh, old wives' tales. Step on a crack, you break your mama's back. Don't split the pole. You know, I walk up under a, a, a ladder, it's, it's bad luck. You know, I break a mirror, that's seven years bad luck. That's witchcraft. That, that, the, the, that ideology was not born from heaven. It is a spirit of control. Oh, I did something. I got to throw some salt over my shoulder. Hey, don't put your purse on the floor, don't you know? Don't sweep my feet. Now, listen, now, I, I'm from the South. We got a whole lot... <laughs> <laughs> we got a whole lot of stuff in the South that you just don't do, right? If your hand is itching, that means money's coming to you. If somebody dreaming about fish, that means somebody about to have a baby. Did that come from heaven? Let's, let's, just, <laughs> let's just keep it real, all right? Old wives' tales, uh, uh, you, they, they can pollute the revelation gifts. Uh, superstition um, also can, can pollute it. Uh, pornography can, can pollute revelation gifts because one of the things that we learned is that although the gifts are given to you, they are given to you, but for the body, they're given to you, but for somebody else. So, so the, the, the so what pornography does is pornography creates an illicit or an illegal fantasy. And, and so with someone that gets involved in pornography, then they, 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 can't, they begin to look at women and men differently. You, you, you can't look at them the way God sees them 
you start looking at them as body parts. You start seeing them in certain positions. You start seeing them uh, as sexual beings and not someone that's hurting, as sexual beings and not someone that is in need of God's love and God's grace. And, and so because you have that in your mind and in your head, because it begins to play back in your eyes all the time, now it, it, it begins to pollute and pervert what God wants to show you. Hallelujah. Glory to your name, God. All right. Uh, uh, so listen, even as you learn yourself, there may be some things that are not necessarily bad, but you've got to recognize, I can't, I can't watch that. I can't listen to that because I recognize that it bothers me. All right. Uh, some of my prophetic people, you already know, you can't watch scary movies at night. <laughs> you know, amen. Because you'll be fighting all through your dreams. You know, um, there, there, there are certain things. And de depending on your level of sensitivity, you know, even for those of you that have dealt with pornography, you might, let's not even go to pornography. You might, some things you can't even watch that just, you know, watching a beach scene, you know, wa watching, you know what I'm saying, kids at the pool, not, not kids, but, you know, people at the pool, you know, the bikini will take you right there. And, and it's those things that will become a gateway. You know, some of you might not need to be on Instagram because, you know, Instagram, they be promoting a whole lot of stuff. And then, no, they're not naked. But you look at that stuff long enough, you, someone said almost, you look at that stuff long enough that you're going to end up finding yourself at two o'clock in the morning in a dark room by yourself. All, all right, let's, let's move on. I, 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 I felt that right there. Amen. And, and it begins to pollute because your, your, your senses are already open. And, and so now what God, God wants to show you something, there's no room because your mind has become clouded with everything else that you've allowed in that does not belong there. Hallelujah. Glory to your name, God. I got a scripture for that too. Matthew chapter 6, verses 22 and 23. Matthew 6 verses 22 and 23 out of the New King James Version. He says, the lamp of the body is the eye. If therefore your eye is good, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eye is bad, your whole body will be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in you is darkness, how great is that darkness? The point is, you've got to guard your eyes. And then I'm going to go for it further and say your ears and your heart your eyes and your ears are gates to your heart all right we've got to guard our heart for out it flow the issues of life we've got to guard our hearts because it's not what goes jesus says not what goes in uh that that comes that uh that, that that pollutes and that you know tears stuff up but it's what comes out for it is out of the fullness of the heart the mouth speaks so when you hear people and seem like they talk up the side of their neck, they are revealing what's in their heart. When you hear people that seem like they're bipolar and, and one minute they're talking to you nice and the next minute they're nasty, it is not anything to do with you, but it is an indication of the division that's in their heart. And, and so we've got to guard our hearts with all diligence. That's why we've got to, you know, Isaiah said uh, that if we keep our minds stayed on him, uh, then that will keep us in perfect peace. That's why Paul's told the Philippians, he said that if you think of those things that are good, those things that are of a good report, those things that are lovely, those things that are righteous, those things that are praiseworthy, he says that what will happen is, he said the peace of God will guard your heart and mind in Christ Jesus. And then he goes on to say that when you begin to do those things that you've both seen and heard in me, he says, then the very God of peace will be with you. The, the, the point is the same. If we are going to be effective uh, in, in our gifts, especially in the revelation gifts, then we've got to keep our portals clean. We've got to keep our eyes clean. We've got to keep our minds clean, our ears and our hearts clean. When we do that, now God is able to give us a revelation and we're able to speak that revelation untainted. We're able to speak that revelation without the pollution. Because how many of you, I don't care how thirsty you are, would drink water out of a dirty glass? 
But when we are not, when we, when we are not responsible over our eyes, our ears, and our heart, that's exactly what we're serving the people of God. Yes, you're anointed. You may love the Lord, but you are giving the people, you are serving the people a gift out of a dirty vessel. Ha, ah, my God. Glory to your name, God. Good evening, Michael Stevenson. Good evening, Curtis Wilson. I pray that you guys are, are, are being blessed tonight. Amen. Any questions or comments? So that was the principles of revelation. Now we're going to get ready to dive into these gifts. Amen. Any questions or comments? Now I want to thank those of you that are watching on Facebook. Uh, if you have questions or comments, please uh, post them. We will be more than happy to, to share and address them uh, as, as they come through. And if you haven't, do me a favor and share this broadcast. If this broadcast has been blessing you so far, don't be selfish. Share this broadcast. Let somebody else know that the word of the Lord is going forth. As we're talking about, this is our series called Homeschool. As we're talking about all this month, the gifts of the spirit. And so today we're talking about the revelation gifts. So we just finished talking about the principles of revelation. Now we're going to get into the word of knowledge and the word of wisdom. Amen. Are we all right? Any questions or comments? Amen. All right, let's go. So the word of knowledge and the word of wisdom. Um, so a couple of things they have in common. Number one, they both speak and reveal something that is beyond your common knowledge or investigation. The beginning point of the word of knowledge and the word of wisdom is beyond you. If it is something that you are speaking that you already knew, something that you are speaking because you were eavesdropping on a conversation, something that you are speaking or sharing because you were trolling somebody, internet stalking, that is not the word of knowledge or the word of wisdom. It is something that comes that is beyond your common knowledge or investigation. It is something that is beyond what you find out by Googling somebody or stalking them on Facebook or the gram. All right. Uh, these are the gifts of the Holy Spirit, which means that in order for you to operate in them effectively and really to operate in them legally, uh, then it must be born of the spirit. It must be something that is revealed to you by the spirit and not something that's been revealed to you by you or by hell. Uh, now, they are commonly confused with prophecy because God will often give a word of knowledge or a word of wisdom with the gift of prophecy. But now, if you recall last week, uh, what prophecy is, what prophecy is, is God's thoughts, plans, opinions, and ideas on a matter. The word of wisdom or the word of knowledge may be facts, instructions, or events, or even warnings. But prophecy gives God's thoughts or his opinions concerning those plans, concerning those events, concerning that warning. All right. Um, and we're going to look at some examples. I'm going to give you some scriptures for some examples here in just a second. A word of knowledge, so, let, let, let's, so that's what they have in common. So let's kind of break them down a little bit further. A word of knowledge is something that can be verified now because it involves information about the past or the present. All right? It's, a, it, it's something that, is, that can be verified right now. So, so a word of knowledge would be... Um, Hey, brother, so-and-so, God has revealed to me that over the last two years, you know, you've been struggling to find a job. You've been struggling financially to make ends meet. That's the word of knowledge. Now, the prophecy will go forth to say something like, and this is just an example, uh, but I want you to know, but the Lord is telling me that, you, that he is with you and that he's got, a, he's got a job lined up for you, but to keep pressing and to prepare for what he's getting ready to bring you into. So, so it gives the, his thought process uh, in line with the information. Now, it's a word of knowledge because the person that I'm speaking to, 
you know, Brother Johnson or Brother, you know, Terry or whoever it is can verify at that point. Yeah, I've been struggling the last two years to find a job. Yeah, I, I've been struggling to, to, to make ends meet, you know, and, and they, they, they'll be able to verify it. That's a word of knowledge. A word of wisdom is something that cannot be verified right now because it involves information about the future. All right. So a word of knowledge deals with the present and the past, which can be verified right now. A word of wisdom is get, provides information about the future. So it cannot be verified right now. Now, I, I want to be very clear that, you know, you may have received a word of wisdom and you say, well, that word didn't come to pass. That person was probably a false prophet. Well, maybe, but maybe not. Uh, a word of wisdom, and whenever you talk about future language, and you can see this in the word of God, every prophecy that was predictive in nature was often conditional. Did, did you catch that? Predictive revelation is often conditional. That means that you have a responsibility and a role to play to bring that word to pass. So, so the man of God or the woman of God could have been seen accurately, could have revealed and communicated it to you accurately, but it does not manifest because you didn't do anything with it. Because you got the word and you said, let me just sit back on my laws and watch God do it. When God may have been saying, you need to prepare. You need to grow in the dark, Carpenter's Church. You need to do some things to, 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 to bring to pass what I have in store for you. All right. Now, usually a word of knowledge will precede a word of wisdom, uh, especially in an evangelistic context, because the word of knowledge causes the heart to soften and the defenses to come down in order to receive the word of wisdom. Because the very first thing uh, we do before we judge the word, we judge in the person. So, so if the if, if if the person we don't know the person, the first thing we're looking at is who are you? Why are you talking to me? Some of us, you know, or who do you think you are? But if we can listen to the word, if we hear the word, and what the word is saying is is verifiable quickly and is accurate, then that now gives us confidence to hear what's next. Uh, let, I, I'll share my testimony about this and, and, and I'll open it up if you guys have questions or comments. Uh, when my wife and I were in Maryland, and I will never forget this, uh, we just found out that, that she was pregnant with Montreal. So she wasn't even showing yet. She may have been a month or two uh, along. And we had my, my nephew, uh, and he was four years old at the time. It was a Tuesday. And I remember telling, telling Tasha, I said, you know what? I feel like some pancakes. Let's go to IHOP. And, and so she's like, okay. So we went to IHOP on a Tuesday and my nephew had to go to the bathroom. So I took him to the bathroom. I come out and the waitress is already seated, my wife. The place is empty except for one table. And don't you know that waitress sat us right up under those people. I had a little bit of an attitude, lady. All these tables that you're going to sit us right up under this group of people. So I said, you know what? Forget about it. I went and I sit down and the guy sitting next to me, because that's how close we were. He said, um, I'm sorry, excuse me. My name is Pastor Hank and, and I, I, I have a word for you. And I'm like, I ain't never met this dude before in my life. I never seen him since. Now, my mom was in Kuwait at the time serving in the second Gulf War. And he said, um, the Lord wanted me to tell you that in 15 days, your mother's coming home and that the baby that, you're, that your wife is carrying, that God's going to bless him. And even your nephew, the guy's going to bless him. And at this point, I'm like, whoa, because again, how does he know my mom's in Kuwait? How does he know that my wife's pregnant? Because we ain't told nobody, especially him. We don't know him and she's not showing and, and so for, for him to share that word of wisdom, that word of knowledge, 
it caused me to sit up a little bit and I leaned in because I'm like, okay, I want to hear what's next. And, and so at this point in my life, I just graduated college and um, I, was, I was a minister at the time. And he said, and you're going to pastor a church. And, and he even started to describe what the church is going to look like. Now, at that point, I had no plans to be a pastor. As a matter of fact, for anybody that know me, I'm like, I pray for pastors because I saw what some pastors was going through and I wouldn't wish being a pastor on some of my worst enemies, <laughs> you know, just being real. Now I say that and I love being a pastor, you know, um, but no, no, don't look at me in that tone of voice. I love being a pastor. <laughs> I love the Carpenter's Church with all my heart, you know, and, 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 but at that time, that was my mindset. But God knew that in order for me to hear and do something with the word of wisdom, I had to be in a position where I would hear it and receive it. So he had to give me a word of knowledge that I could verify right then in order to receive it. Now, don't you know, I went home that night, my wife and I, and we looked at the calendar and said, what's today? And we counted out 15 days from that day. And I said, we're going to test this word. And we're going to see if my mom's going to be home in 15 days. Don't you know, 15 days later, my mom was home. What ended up happening was I had a cousin uh, that was older, that had Alzheimer's, that had taken a turn from the worst. And my Nana, who was alive at the time, uh, sent a request through the Red Cross. And my mom would receive permission to leave her troop and come home early. 15 days. I said, I guess I'm going to be a pastor one day. <laughs> because the word of knowledge is verifiable. And a word of wisdom may not be verifiable right then. But if you take the steps and are responsible over that word of wisdom, then it, it will manifest. Amen. Uh, uh, questions or comments? God bless you, Pastor uh, McMillan, Pastor Albert, Brother Robert Dennis. God bless you. Thank you for joining us tonight on our conversation on the revelation gifts. Uh, any, any questions or comments? All right, so let's go, let's move forward. First Corinthians chapter 14, verses 23 through 25. You're taking notes, write that down. First Corinthians chapter 14, verses 23 through 25. And especially for my Carpenter's Church family, uh, this scripture is very dear to my heart. If you don't know anything else to pray for our church, I want you to pray this. It says in the New King James Version, therefore, if the whole church comes together in one place and all speak with tongues, and that's referring to the diverse tongues, but it's also referring to the prayer language, and there come in those who are uninformed or unbelievers, will they not say that you are out of your mind? But if all prophesy and an unbeliever or an uninformed person comes in, he is convinced by all, he is convicted by all, and thus the secrets of his heart are revealed. And so falling down on his face, he will worship God and report that God is truly among us. That is my prayer for the Carpenter's Church. You know, uh, uh, praise God for your, for your prayer language. Praise God for the gift of, of tongues. But listen, I want to create a culture and an environment that is rooted in prophecy so that when someone that comes in that does not know church, when someone comes in that does not know God, to think that we crazy for meeting every Sunday and for getting together on Zoom and on Facebook and all this craziness, that they come together and a word is released, a prophecy is released, a word of knowledge, a word of wisdom, the heart of God concerning them, that they will be convinced that God is among us. I don't think that there's any greater compliment that a church could receive that God is in this place. I don't think there's any greater compliment that a believer can receive than that which uh, Paul, no, no, Peter and John received in Acts chapter four, where the Roman soldiers saw them and said, wait a second, 
uh, I perceive that these men are uneducated, but I also perceive that they have been with Jesus. There, there, there's something about when you have been re, uh, revealed, exposed, apocalypto to Christ, that what's been in him is now in you, and that his words become your words. His heart is your heart, and you begin to operate and move like him, which is the reason why the mandate is for all believers that signs and wonders would follow us. Because if you are a Christian, you should not be a Christian in name only. You should not be a Christian because of how you dress, but you are a Christian because the signs and the wonders, the activity of your life reflect what he has done. Glory to your name, God. So, so when we look at it, this is effective in evangelism because it reveals to the unbeliever that God sees you, that God sees you. Uh, uh, have you ever been in a situation, had a conversation with somebody and, and, and you spoke a word of knowledge or, or spoke a word of wisdom to them and, and they just begin to break down and cry or they, or they just become, they get taken back because how did you know that? I don't know that, God revealed it. And God would do that because he needs to remind all of us that I see you, you're not forgotten, you're not forsaken. Listen, can, can I take a moment to prophesy over somebody that might be watching this on Facebook or, or, or even in our Carpenters Church? You've been quarantined, you know, for, for six, seven months now. I need you to know that you're not forgotten. I, I need you to know that, that, that God still sees you. I, I need you to know that even though this that 2020 may not be going according to your plans, it's going according to his I need, I need you to be confident. And I know, I know some of you just say, just throw the whole year away. Pause, pause, hold on, hold on. Pause on throwing the whole year away because even though it may be inconvenient for you, even though it did not meet your expectation, even though you didn't do the things that you wanted to do, this was in God's plan. How do I know? Because he allowed it to happen. So, so I need you to know that God sees you. He's not forgotten about you. He's not, he's not scrambling to come up with a plan B for the rest of your life. Glory to your name, God. Um, all right, let's get back to the word. Cause I, I felt like I was about to cry right there. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to your name, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory. Man, can we just take a moment just to thank God right there? Just for the reminder that God, I'm so glad that you see me. I'm so glad that with all the hell that's going on, that, 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 that you don't have to change your plans concerning me. God, I appreciate you, Lord God, that even through the hell that I introduced, that you have not forsaken me. I thank you right now. Glory to your name, God. Oh, God, I thank you. Hallelujah. 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 God sees you. Listen, it is effective in the believer because it's effective in the unbeliever in evangelism because it shows that God sees you, but even it's effective for the believer because it reveals that God has already seen where you're going. You, you, you missed that. God has already seen where you're going. I believe that our response to the word of wisdom will be different when we realize that our future is God's memory. Say lie right there. We're going to say lie right there. If you take a note, I need you to write that down and remind yourself that your future is God's memory. He's already been there. He already knows the way. He, yeah, it gives us hope. Hi, y'all not about she. He knows where we are going. He knows what he's doing. Why are we able to uh, walk through the valley of the shadow of death and not fear? It's because I have the revelation that he is with me. His rod and his staff, they comfort me. Glory to your name, God. Uh, listen, I would panic going through the valley of the shadow of death if he's not with me. I would give up if I went through hell and high water if he was not with me. But because I have the revelation 
that he is with me, the revelation that I am going the way that he wants me to go, that he is yet leading me, the revelation that he has never left me or forsaken me, the revelation that he is Emmanuel, uh, that is what gives me hope, that is what gives me strength to press on through it. I can't give up. I refuse to panic because I know I'm still in his plans. Glory to your name. Now, now, when I was, when I, when, when the Lord gave me this, um, it, it reminded me of my dad. Now, uh, uh, for those of you that may or may not know, my dad, uh, for the majority of my life, has been a truck driver. And, and I remember as a kid, you know, going on the road with him. And the, one of the greatest things was the CB radio. You know, he would, he had the CB radio and he, he'd pick up the, 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 the speaker, he'd press the button. You're like, hey, uh, breaker, breaker, one, nine, breaker, breaker. This is uh, Scooby-Doo. Uh, you read me? And, and he just wanted to say, is there anybody on the line? And then somebody else would chime in. Oh, uh, yeah, Scooby-Doo, why I read you? Uh, you know, uh, listen, I know my dad's on here. <laughs> it's been a long time. But but the idea was they would communicate. So so he would say, I'm going southbound. Uh, you know, is a, is a smoky bear out there. Now, smoky bear referred to the, the sheriff, the, the police, the highway patrol, for those of you that are, that may not know, you know, or how's the traffic? Are there any accidents? You know, how's it looking that way? How's the weather? And they would know how to maneuver detour. Now, this is before GPS. They would know how to maneuver, how to detour, because they would be speaking to somebody that's coming from the, where they're going. Hallelujah. And, and so this is what the word of wisdom is. You are giving someone insight on where they're going from a person and from the God that's already been there. So, so it's so important that we guard our eyes, our ears, and our heart because we don't want to give false information. We don't want to give misinformation. Lives are at stake. The reputation of the father is at stake when we are so cavalier and destructive in just trying to speak just for the sake of being popular or just for the sake of wanting to have something to say. Hallelujah. So, so it's so important uh, that, 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 that we are submitted. We are submitted. I, I can't say that enough, that we are submitted to God. I don't care what gift you have. You have to be submitted to God. Glory to your name. Now, now let me let me give you some things just to keep in mind, especially for those of you that are not well versed. You may be young in the faith. This may be your first time hearing about the word of knowledge and the word of wisdom. Uh, you may be seasoned in it. And if you're seasoned in it, then you should be able to verify what I'm saying some things to consider with these gifts. Number one, you can't be scared to be wrong. If you are scared to be wrong, then you will never open your mouth. You cannot operate in this gift nor any of these gifts in fear. Every one of these gifts must be operated by faith. So you can't be scared to be wrong. I remember the very first time God used me uh, uh, to give a word of wisdom. I was in college and there was a friend of mine and the Lord said something very simple. Tell, call, call her and tell her that she got some money coming. Don't you know Now she was a believer. I'm a believer. It was my first time. You know, we were good friends. And let me tell you how scared I was. I mean, my stomach was shaking, my hands were shaking because I was scared of being wrong. I, and I was scared of, of, of sounding crazy. You know, um, because at the end of the day, I decided to trust God. Man, what's going on? My nephew Marquez is in the room. God bless you, nephew. I miss you, sir. Call me. Call me, please, tonight. Call me tonight. Um, I was scared of being wrong. And, but I said, but I knew what I heard God saying. So I, I picked up my phone. I called her. She said, hello. I said, hey, sis, um, I just want to say that I believe the Lord's telling me that you got some money coming. 
and the worst possible thing happened. She didn't say nothing. She was quiet. I was like, oh Lord, she gonna think I'm crazy. She gonna think I'm nuts. I'm like, I said, okay, I'll talk to you later, bye. <laughs> and I hung up the phone. The next day, she got a check in the mail that she was not expecting. And I, and I saw her, uh, I, was going to, I was going to class and I saw her and she said, Teray, I want to thank you for that word. And God did just what you said. And I was like, yo, I was so scared. Why didn't you say nothing? And she said, because when you said it to me, I was just in shock and I just began to praise God. And, and, and so, I, I, but I want you to know that you can't be scared to be wrong. Number two, God will, will, will train you with little things. God is not going to give you a whole lot of stuff because he's not doing this to try to embarrass you. He wants to train your faith so that you can be effective in it. And, and faith is something that grows. Uh, thank God for the mustard seed, but we're after the mature. We're after the mustard tree. And, and so in order to transition from a seed to a tree, there are levels of growth that take place. So as you operate in the word of knowledge and the word of wisdom, don't expect God to give you a whole paragraph of something. He may give you something real small. Hey, go to that person and tell them that Jesus loves them. Hey, go to that person and just ask them if I can pray for you. He's going to give you something real simple uh, because he wants to train you to trust him that you're hearing him and, 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 to, and to build your faith in it. Um, number three, you cannot rely on the response of the person. If you're giving a word of knowledge or a word of wisdom to somebody else, the response of that person should never be the measuring stick on your accuracy. All right. Now, if it is a word of knowledge, then yes, they can verify it. If it is a word of wisdom, you have got to trust God. So sometimes we'll say something and then we'll look for them to verify. We'll look to see if they're going to cry. And then we judge if we heard God right because they were crying or shedding tears. They may not. It all depends on the personality of a person. You know, uh, you guys have heard me, you know, share that with about me and my wife. You know, we're different in prayer. My wife and I are different. You know, I, I will pray and sometimes I won't cry at all. As soon as my wife start to pray, she be like, Jesus, ooh, and just start to cry. It's just a part of her personality. So, so you cannot judge your effectiveness and your accuracy by the response of other people. I, I, I hope you're learning something tonight. Number four, uh, don't limit the word of knowledge or the word of wisdom to your own intellect or intelligence. Again, what God is showing you is beyond you. So, so if he is speaking to you for somebody else, you may not know all the details. He is it, it, not, God may not, you know, show you all, all of the, you know, the whole story. You know, Paul said that we see in part and we prophesy in part. And it's your responsibility to be faithful over the part of the revelation that God has shown you. So, so if he's giving you a word of knowledge for somebody, they can verify it and they'll fill in, they'll, they'll fill in the gaps. If it's a word of wisdom, he may not give you the whole story and, and he may not give them the whole story until they walk into some things because it may be something that's building over time. Just like he told uh, the, 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 the 10 lepers, go show yourself to, you know, to the priest. And as they were walking, they were healed. Number five, don't be the first to speak. When it comes to the word of knowledge or the word of wisdom, don't be quick to speak. I cannot stress that enough. Do not be quick to speak. All right. I know Paul tell, told that to the Ephesians in the context of anger, to be slow to speak, you know, and, and all that, uh, slow to anger. But I'm, I'm here to give you that same wisdom 
with the operation of the word of knowledge or the word of wisdom. You may know that God has given that to you, but I'm here to tell you, be slow to speak. All right. Here's how you activate this gift. Here's how you confirm this gift. You pray. Then you listen. Then you speak. Uh, for those of you that have this gift, okay, I, I see your, I see your hand, uh, Minister Evans. I'm, I'm gonna get you in just a second. For those of you that have this gift, for those of you that desire this gift, you don't need a church service. Uh, you need to pray, listen, and then speak what you believe God is hearing. Now, one of my goals and one of my desires is that as we come back together. We're going to start having these activation classes where we can practice prophesying in a safe environment. Amen. Uh, Minister Eva, I saw your hand up. Go ahead. How do you practice balancing knowing when not to speak first and not um, like not being scared? Yeah. So so when you when you're looking at that, uh, you got to ask yourself, where is it coming from? Now, understand that 2 Timothy 1 and 7 tells us that God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of love, power, and a sound mind. So, so he's, so, so one, if it is, let me say, it's going to be natural to be nervous about new territory. You're going to be nervous about, you know, that, that's something that's natural. But here's the thing, we cannot allow that fear to stop us when we know it's something that God is saying to us. So if God is giving you a word and he is telling you to say it to somebody else and you hear him clearly, you know you hear him and you can, you, it's, it, you can verify by scripture what he's telling you, then you have got to just press on through any feelings of fear that you have. Uh, I, I was I can't remember who who I heard say this, but courage is not action uh, in the absence of fear, but it's action in the presence of fear. I might be scared anyway, but I still do it. My first experience, as I showed, I was scared to death, voice shaking, stomach twisting, hands shaking, you know. But I knew what I heard, and and so I knew I had a responsibility to say. Uh, and, and to share what God was telling me. And, and so um, you, you're going to see, he's, he's the, so where the balance comes in of even when to say it and when not to say it is through prayer. So God may reveal something to you. Then the next question should be, okay, God, what do I do with this? Because again, everything that he's shown you is not something that you need to say. So, so we have to temper even our motivation because every one of these gifts are used to reveal Christ and to bring us closer to him. So if, let's say, for instance, God has revealed something to you about a sin that your brother or your sister is involved in. Uh, I think it's irresponsible for you to stand up with a mic in front of the church and say, um, Brother Terrence, stand up. The Lord has shown me that you have been suffering and dealing with pornography in private, and the Lord wants you to be free. Hey, hey, in Jesus' name. That's 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 out of order. Because even though what he's shown you may be correct, you're bringing shame, you know, on that on that brother, and you are going to drive him away from a community that was designed to be a, a, a place of grace and safety. And, and so now we would have to, as a body, we would have to work on convincing him that we still love him and that it's okay and we can't even deal with the issue. And, and so in that situation, wisdom says that you maybe you pray about it. God, how do I do it? And then because he's a brother and you a woman, you know, God, who does he know that he trusts that I can send another brother to him that could probably relate to him in that way and that, that, can, that can minister to him and mentor him. Or let me bring it to my pastor if I don't know. 
because the pastor is responsible to watch over their souls. So let me just share with the pastor what the Lord has shown me. And that way it's all for me. And I'll just pray and be an intercessor about it. And, and I'll let the pastor ex exercise wisdom on how to, how to respond to that situation. Uh, now, I know that was a very long answer. I hope that, that, that helps your question. It does. Thank you. Amen. Glory to your name, God. Amen. So, so as we're going, is there any other questions or comments before we, before we move forward? I'm almost done with the word of wisdom and knowledge, getting ready to go into discerning the spirits. What's my time look like? My God. Hey. All right, let's, let's press forward then. Uh, Romans 6 and verse 13. Write that down. Romans 6 and verse 13 of the New King James Version. And do not present your members as instruments of unrighteousness to sin, but present yourselves to God as being alive from the dead and your members as instruments of righteousness to God. All right. So this is what I was saying before, that we got to stay submitted to the Lord. As long as you are submitted, so are your gifts. When you, are, when you are not submitted to the Lord, then you open up your gifts uh, to be used by other means. And, and this is where you got prophets that start working in necromancy and, and working in being a soothsayer and palm readers, you know, uh, and, and, you know, they, they call the psychic hotline because they are prophets that are not submitted to God. This is where you see uh, King Saul that doesn't know what to do. So he goes to the witch at Endor to try to resurrect Samuel, you know, uh, to get a word. The, the gift is in operation, but is not submitted. So, so the, the word for you is Romans 6 and 13. You have got to stay submitted so that your gift also stays submitted to the Lord. All right, now some examples on the word of knowledge. You can study the life of the prophet Elisha. Uh, God used him mightily in the gift of the word of knowledge. Uh, look at 2 Kings chapter 5, how he dealt with his servant Gehazi. 2 Kings chapter 6, uh, and, and the, the, his interaction with the king of Syria. Also, you can look at John chapter 4 and how uh, Jesus' conversation with the Samaritan woman, where he says, go get your husband. Oh, I don't have a husband, I got five. Yeah, you're right about that. Uh, he said, I don't have a husband. He said, no, you're right, you have five husbands, and the one you're with now is not your husband. <laughs> that was a word of knowledge. Now, some of us, we look at, oh, that's messy. You know what I'm saying? But I want you to look at the, look at the gift. Look at the gift in operation. Now, uh, we have to be wise in how we exercise it, which is the reason why I say you got to be slow to speak. All right. The gift is not used to tear down people. The gift is not used to just expose people of their sin. How many of you have been nervous being around prophetic people because you didn't want nobody to expose your mess? You didn't want nobody to expose your struggle, you know? And, 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 and that's because we have a... a perverted view of the gift and, and really because people have misused that gift the gift of prophecy the word of knowledge and the word of wisdom is not designed to tear down people it's not designed to just expose people of sin it is designed to reveal christ and is designed to bring us to a place uh, uh, uh where we can grow, uh, draw closer to christ all right so biblical examples on the operation of the word of knowledge, 2 Kings chapter 5, 2 Kings chapter 6, John chapter 4. All right, examples on the word of wisdom. Uh, look at the life of the prophet Elijah, 1 Kings chapter 17. And which I thought was amazing because it was the word of wisdom that saved Elijah's life. There was a famine that was in the land because of the gift of prophecy, the prophetic word that came through Elijah. But God told him, go to the brook Kidron. He goes, and then on the word of wisdom, he goes there, the direction, the instruction, he goes there. 
the brook dries up. And, and if we read it too fast, we would assume that because the brook dried up, that Elijah left to go to Zarephath. But the word of the Lord came to Elijah and says, get up and go to Zarephath because I got a widow woman that's going to feed you. That's going to take care of you. So it was at the word of the Lord, again, the word of wisdom that Elijah came into this woman to not only save his life, but the widow and her child. Also look at, so that's 1 Kings 17. Also look at 2 Chronicles chapter 20 and beginning at verse 17. The word of the Lord that came to Jehoshaphat, you, uh, you have no need to fight in this battle, but stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Now, as a king, it was normal to go to battle, to lead your troops in battle. But, but what happens if you get, invo get involved in a battle that God just wants you to witness? You will end up causing unnecessary death and casualty because of the absence of the word of wisdom. So in this situation, it served in a, it saved an entire nation. So that's the word of knowledge and the word of wisdom. Amen. Now, discerning the spirits won't take as long. Are we all right? Do I have a few more minutes? All right. I got some thumbs up. Thank you for those of you that are hanging with me uh, on Facebook. You know, this is usually our time when we shut it down. Um, and, and if you want, if you got to go, God bless you. Thank you for being here. We're going to press on. Feel free to catch the replay and also check us out on YouTube. All right. So as we're looking at discerning of spirits, uh, this is much like what I was sharing with the word of knowledge and the word of wisdom. Discerning of spirits is not just to see who's shady. It's not just to detect who's wrong. It's not just to detect who's messy. Matter of fact, if that's all you see, then you are either misappropriating God's gift or you are seeing people through your own cynicism and insecurities, which is really rooted in the spirit of the accuser. The devil is known, one of his names is the spirit of the accuser. He's an accuser of the brethren. So if everybody that you see is wrong, shady, no good, low down, mm-hmm, I knew it all along about them, you know, uh, you might want to check your motives and you might want to check the source of your information. Again, you can receive information from three ways, from heaven, from your soul, and from hell. And so you've got to check if what you are seeing, if it's based on your own insecurities and cynicism, or if it's based on the word of God. Amen. Discerning of spirits is not intuition. Let, let me talk to my ladies. I thank God for women and intuition. I thank God for that. But we got to be very careful and knowing that there is a difference between the discerning, the gift of discerning of spirits and intuition. Intuition is born out of your soul. It is born out of the wealth of knowledge and information that you have, either from past experiences or just from you just uh, uh interpreting what you're seeing or investigating it, it comes you, you're putting the pieces together you know um uh, you know I, I i love it when when i see my wife go into a new environment because her eyes are just dark and I, and I see some other women that i know they, they just kind of sit back for, for a second and they just watch it and and they just observe it mm -hmm. and they they're reading the room and i thank god for it and thank god for the wisdom of those that had that but but let's not mistake uh, the, the, the wisdom that is born out of your soul from the discerning of spirits, all right? Uh, it's born out of your soul. So therefore, it's based off of uh, information that you receive cognitively or emotionally, talking about intuition. And so intuition then is now motivated by protecting you or your personal gain. So this is how you know that it's intuition because the root of it What's motivated is I got to I got to watch out for me, I got to protect me and mine. And again, there's nothing wrong with that, but I, I want to identify it. 
I, I got a, I got a stake in this. And so, so I got to make sure that certain things operate a certain way or certain people don't get involved or certain things happen this way so that I can profit from this. I can gain something from this. I just got to keep my peace, girl. I got to watch myself. You know, we, we, we try to clean it up with that, but it's really based on intuition and personal gain. Now, the gift of discerning of spirits, like the others, are born out of God's spirit. Therefore, it is based off of God's word and, uh, and, and information that we receive from the spirit and, and motivated by the desire to see people walking closer to Christ. This is why it's not always a negative thing that, that you will see in discerning of spirits. Because the motivation of it is not to see who's wrong, but it's to see who, who, where do I need to push somebody closer? You know, and, and they may not be in sin, but maybe they're already running for God and I need to push them faster. Or maybe they're already running, but I need to warn them about something that they're involved in, or I need to redirect them in a certain area. You know, God may use the discerning of spirits in a different context, but the heart of it is wanting to see the best out of people for the sake of Christ. Um, one thing that we've got to know, and I didn't say it with the word of knowledge, word of wisdom, uh, but I'm going to say it here with discerning the spirits, but it's necessary for all of, for the, for all of the revelation gifts. Discerning starts with you. The word of knowledge, the word of wisdom, discerning the spirits, they start with you. Let's not deceive ourselves into thinking that God is only interested in talking to you about everybody else. God is interested in talking to you about you first. Which is the reason why you got to get the speck out of your own eye so that you can see clearly or get the, uh, I'm sorry, the, the beam out of your own eye so that you can see clearly to get the speck out of your brother's eye. He wants you to get the speck out of your brother's eye because he may need some help. And Galatians 6 says that those that are spiritual should help those that fall, but you got to take care of yourself first so that you can help them appropriately and be careful lest you fall. So discerning is going to start with you, all right? It, you, you're not operating in discerning of spirits if you can see for everybody else, but God don't show you nothing about you. You, you, you might want to go back and double check, go back to your closet and double check that gift and make sure that it's not intuition. All right. Because uh, again, intuition is selfish and it's all about protecting me. So it's not going to necessarily come against me because I like me. I'm selfish. I like me. I don't want to change me. I'm comfortable with me. We're discerning the spirits will discern. Hebrews tells us the soul and spirit. And that doesn't start with everybody else's. Huh? That starts with you, your soul and spirit. So before God uses you to be a surgeon for somebody else, he's got to make sure that you're healthy. And, and one thing that has caused a church to have such a bad reputation is that we have sick, diseased, and unhealthy surgeons with scalpels. So, so we've got to understand that it is a, the Bible says in Hebrews that it is a two-edged sword. So when you, when you think about two-edged sword, I, I want you to think about uh, what we would consider an ax. You know, you, you know an ax where, where you have a blade on this end, but a blade on this end. So every time you're swinging, it's, it's cutting, coming, and going. So, so that word, and, and this, this is for our preachers also, the word got to deal with you first. The word got to deal with you before it's able to deal with others. Matter of fact, it's to your advantage that the word deals with you before it deals with others. Because Paul said, I beat my own flesh so that after preaching to you, I will not be considered a castaway. Because God will bless the people in spite of you. Amen. So discerning starts with you. Um, recognizing and defining the intent and motives of your own heart for the purpose of keeping and drawing you ever closer to intimacy with the Father. We should always be evaluating our life. We should always be evaluating our relationship with Christ. If we're in the same place today that we were last month or last year, I, I, I wanna say something's wrong. We should always be pressing 
toward the mark of the high call, which is in Christ Jesus. We should never be in a place where we become complacent, all right? Uh, because complacency leads to apathy. When you become comfortable where you are, you stop growing. And where you start growing, stop growing, then eventually you're going to begin to start falling away. And it's just like we talked about, let me tie this into what we talked about Sunday. Uh, a lot of what we're dealing with today as adults is because of the inconsistency of watering that we receive from our mothers the inconsistency or the lack of watering that we receive. So seeds need constant watering. And, and as believers, we need constant water. We need to always be watering our faith, watering our gifts, watering our, uh, our relationship, our sanctification, because we can't get to a point where we think that we have arrived. We can't get to a point where we think that, okay, I'm done. Now I don't have to do anything else. There's always something more that God is revealing in us as we draw closer to him. So discerning the, uh, the spirits is going to start with you. All right. Um, I, I, I said it earlier, but I, 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 it bears repeating discerning would be polluted and can be considered untrustworthy where unforgiveness resides. You, you, cannot be, you cannot live in unforgiveness and walk effectively in discerning, in discerning the spirits, all right? Unforgiveness pollutes revelation. Uh, and, and why is that? Because unforgiveness deals with relationships. And your gift of discerning of spirits is for you, but it is also for the body. So, so if, if you have unforgiveness, it's a two-way street. It's going to pollute the discerning that God has given you for somebody else, but also it's going to pollute the person from receiving it from you. Because it may be a right word, but I can't hear the word because I hear the person. Because me and this person has an issue. Uh, think about Lot's future sons-in-law. Lot came and gave them a right word, get out of this city because God's going to destroy the city. It was a right word, but because of the relationship and because he wasn't in a place uh, of, of, that he was trustworthy, they lost their lives. They did not heed the word. So it is a two-way street. Uh, discerning also comes with a responsibility because the question is posed, what are you doing to bring healing, warning, encouragement, protection, or strength to what you see? Woo, God just showed me something. Okay, what are you doing about it? And, and that's not to minimize intercession. Intercessory prayer is a powerful weapon of heaven where we partner with the struggles and, the, and, and helping to bear the burdens of somebody else. It is a powerful weapon. So I'm not here to minimize a praying for someone as a minor task. We ought to pray. And, and I'm not saying that we ought to necessarily pray and do something else. If God only calls you to intercede, then that's going to be enough. But the question is, what is he calling you to do with what he's shown you? Last thing I have, then we're going to open up for questions. Discerning of spirits is necessary um, in more than just the context. And matter of fact, all of these gifts are not to be confined to just a church service. Let, let me make sure I say that. And I'll probably say that three or four more times during this month. The gifts of the spirit are not exclusive to the church service. The gifts are a part of you. The word of knowledge, the word of wisdom, uh, the, uh, uh, the spirit to get the prophecy, diverse tongues, the interpretation of tongues, the word of knowledge, the word of wisdom, discerning the spirits, the gift of healings, the uh, gift of miracles, and the gift of faith. They are not confined to a church service. I share with you my example already of how I received the word of knowledge and the word of wisdom and prophecy in IHOP. We have coined the phrase marketplace ministry because we have so narrowed our focus to the ministry only being in a church service. 
but ministry was never designed for just Sunday mornings at 11 o'clock or whenever you have your church services. Ministry is something that is confined to people. So wherever people are, ministry should be. Whenever people are, you interact with people, there should be ministry. And because the gifts belong to you, you should be able to operate in those gifts without a choir, without praise team, without an organ, without drums, with, with, without being pumped up, because the gifts belong to you. Uh, you. You shouldn't have to go in a trance and pray for three hours to use your gift if it belongs to you. It's, and it's necessary with making any important decisions. I, I believe that discernment of spirits Word of knowledge and word of wisdom, these revelation gifts will save us a lot of drama in relationships, career choices, uh, for my young people coming up, which college to go to, um, even in the context of a church, which building should we go to next? You know, who should we hire for my entrepreneurs? You know, what business decisions should you make? Should I take on a partner? Should I take a loan out? You know, it. it the word of wisdom, the word of knowledge, discerning of spirits are relevant and necessary in, in a, a, a myriad of contexts outside of just the church service. If the only thing that we can see is you need to be saved. If the only thing that we can prophesy is that God wants to bless you, then it does not mean that you don't have it. It just means that you need to continue to develop it. And so the way you develop it is through intimacy with God. How do we develop intimacy? Time of prayer, time of fasting, uh, studying your word, studying the gifts, studying those that operate in the gifts, which is the reason why I was sharing with you examples in the Bible where these gifts are in operation. Uh, for those of you that walk in the gift of the word of knowledge, I wouldn't even stop at 2 Kings 5 and 6. Read all about Elisha's life and see how God used it. For those that are for the word of wisdom, read all of Elisha's life and see how God used it. You know, see how, read through Jesus's life through the gospels and see if you can point out when he was speaking a word of knowledge versus a word of wisdom. Also for the discerning of spirits, a biblical example, uh, Acts chapter 16, verses 16 through 18 is a great example of the discerning of spirits. Also, John chapter 3, I believe, uh, starting at verse 3. Uh, Acts chapter 16, verses 16 through 18, uh, that's when Paul and, and, and his group was, was going through the town. And this, uh, this young girl came falling behind them and for days kept screaming, these men uh, are from God. These men are from God. These men are from God. And they're coming to show you salvation. Now, Let's be clear, if you read in this, the Bible says uh, that, I believe in verse 15, that she came and she was filled with another spirit. That is the author giving us his, uh, his commentary so that we understand the context as to why Paul responded the way he did. But we should not assume that Paul knew from the outset that she was filled with another spirit. And, and so it was after a few days that he became, became troubled in his spirit. And that's when he turned around and rebuked her and cast that spirit out of her. It was not prior knowledge that he had. Also, John chapter three, you know, this was the conversation that Jesus had with Nicodemus. When Nicodemus came, at, uh, came to Jesus in the middle of the night and he began to, you know, began to brag on, hey, rabbi, you know, you're a great teacher. And she says, uh, let's get to the point. Unless you have been born again, you cannot enter the kingdom. <laughs> so he's discerning, like, listen, you ain't got the butt of my biscuits. Let's, let's get to the point of it. We're not here for all of that. Here's what you really need to understand. I, I'm not here to prove to you how smart I am and all this stuff, I, I, or, or if I'm worthy of this or that. I'm, this is what you need. And, and so the discerning of spirits enabled Jesus in that conversation to, to get to the point of the matter and to provide the revelation that Nicodemus needed to change his life. Amen. Any questions or comments? That was on discerning of spirits. Yeah, I have a question. Yes, sir. Um, 
the suppose that um, in taking in all that you uh, that we talked about this evening, um, say there is someone who who comes to you and says that they have a word for you, whether a word period, uh, knowledge, wisdom, whatever, but you know the reputation of this person. You know that um, you know that they it may not be coming from a good place. Do you? Would you say that you still receive the word and allow God to give you further uh, discernment on it, or should you just flat out refuse to receive it right then and there? That's, that's a good question. Um, I, I think that it, it will probably depend on the person. You know, I would I would pray and and ask the Lord if I should entertain this or not, and, and it'd be different. It depends if so. If it's somebody that I knew was aggressively against me. I don't want to use the term enemy, but I just knew that they don't, they don't mean me any good. They never have. Um, I probably would. I probably would reject it. I, I, I probably wouldn't unless the Lord spoke to me and told me to listen. And, and, and really the struggle or the tension that I have, even with your question, and it's a great question, is I'm reminded about Balaam, the prophet Balaam. Um, if, if you remember, Balaam was being hired by the king Balak because Balak wanted to hire Balaam to prophesy against the children of Israel. And he went to the Lord. The Lord told him no. And Balak uh, sent more people with more money to Balaam. And Balaam said, Lord, you sure? <laughs> and, and, and so the Lord let him go anyway because he knew his mind was made up. But what did he do? He opened up the mouth of the donkey. And, 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 he, and the donkey began to prophesy to him because he wouldn't hear the word of the Lord. So I, I understand that God can use anybody to get the word to me. You know, in the prophet Balaam's uh, situation, he used the donkey. With Peter, he used a rooster, you know. And, and so God is able to speak to anybody. So as a general rule, I would not, holistically just write off somebody just because I didn't know them. But if I knew that they aggressively was against me, I would have paused unless the Lord said something different. But regardless of who it is, whether I had a great relationship with them or not, I think the responsibility that we have as hearers is to be like the Berean church is to go search out the matter. Once we receive that word, I need to judge it by the word of God. You know, um, I, I, I remember long time ago a young prophet came to our church for our youth service and you all know my wife i mean she looked like she's you know she looked like she's 20 something now so imagine when she was 20 something she looked like she was a 13 little teeny bop and he thought that she was another high school student or junior high student and started prophesying to her about boyfriends now i'm a minister there i was i was helping to work the altar and I'm like, ain't nobody going to correct this guy, you know? <laughs> and at the end of the day, you know, the, he, I, it, you have to be sensitive to not, you don't want to crush anybody, you know? Um, but again, the word of knowledge is something that's verifiable right now. The word of wisdom is something that is not verifiable right now, but as you are a, a responsible can be. So, so the, the point of it all is, regardless of the source, we need to be able to verify it because he can give us a good word from a bad person. He can also give us a bad word from a good person. If you remember the story of the old prophet and the young prophet, um, I believe it was the second Kings 13, where the young prophet goes into Bethel, gives a word and the Lord told him, once you give this word, leave. Don't, don't even go back the same way you came. Don't eat, don't drink. And the old prophet that lived in that place sent his servants and told him an angel spoke to me and said for you to stay and eat with me. And when, and he submitted to that older, uh, that older prophet and God judged him and he, and a lion ended up slewing him or, or killing him. So we got to be careful that we don't take, that we don't take for granted the exterior, you know, it could be somebody with a title and everything else in a big church. We still got to judge the word. So good, good question. Any other questions or comments? Amen. So 
the question that I had for you all at the beginning, I, I want to bring it back to the forefront. And for those of you that are just joining us, uh, I want to uh, hear from you as well on Facebook. The question is, do you know what gifts you have? Or let me say it like this, what gifts do you possess? And do you have any gifts that you desire? Uh, because when we look at the end of 1 Corinthians 12, I believe it's verse 28, uh, Paul gives the exhortation to desire the best gifts and he, or desire the gifts and he'll show us a better way. And, and so I, I'm curious if you know what gifts you have and if so, what are those gifts? And then if you have a desire to grow in it or a desire for something different, um, share, I would like if, you're, if you would be so bold uh, to share that as well. And, and so I want you know, especially my people that are here with me on Zoom to unmute and share. And even for those of you that are on Facebook to type it in the comments. And even if you're not sure, hey, say you're not sure, we'll, we'll definitely be praying for you because we want this. And it's my desire that God will use this month to, to quicken a hunger and to stir up a desire for more of him and for the gifts of the spirit in your life. Uh, so, so I'll start off with me. Um, God has given me the gift of prophecy. Um, because one thing that I've noticed in my teaching and in my preaching that he always gives me his thoughts and his opinions concerning the information. I don't just give you the information and say, all right, go do what you want with it. But, but he gives, he, he always speaks to me uh, for you, his thoughts, his plans. I pray that you heard it tonight, you know, uh, concerning the information. Uh, also, um, he, the word of knowledge and the word of wisdom. And now those are the, those two gifts are gifts that I'm praying that God that, and working on growing in. I'm not there yet. I'm not satisfied as far as my mastery, uh, if I, if just being transparent of the word of knowledge and the word of wisdom. There will be times where I will hear it clearly, and 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 I can I can speak some things, and and I will I know I won't know I know it's God, but there's other times where like all right Lord speak to me I'm listening. And it'd be like crickets. <laughs> and, and don't get me wrong. Even if you have a revelation gift, it is his prerogative of how, when, and to what extent he's going to share with you his information. Um, but that's me. So I want to start off and just be transparent that the gifts that I recognize in me is, is prophecy, uh, the word of knowledge, and the word of wisdom, and the things that are growing uh, and those things that are growing in me are word of knowledge and word of wisdom. That's what I'm after. I'm also desiring, if I, you know, praying for the uh, the gift of healing. I would love to be able to lay hands and, and to see the sick healed consistently. Did you catch that? Consistently. Because any of us that are lovers of Christ and that are walking in obedience to him can lay hands on the sick and they recover. Can, can, and we might all prophesy. But the ones that, that possess the gifts, the, the, the earmark of it is the consistency of it, of, of your operation. All right, so I wanna give you space at this time to, to follow my lead. Yeah, um, I see it. Uh, Elder Leonard said prophecy, word of wisdom and uh, discerning of spirits and the word of knowledge. Praise God, yes, sir, I definitely see that. And, and, and I see the discerning of spirits is uh, the strongest on you, Elder Leonard. It's, I think it's, it's the discerning of spirits uh, that really activate the rest of it. You know, uh, that you you that God will, will drop something in your spirit and then it'll get you moving. And that's when he starts to begin to move in the, in the other areas. But yes, sir, I definitely can see that. So what we'll do is uh, for those of you uh, that are on Facebook. I want to thank you for, 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 for hanging out with us a little later tonight. Uh, I want to encourage you uh, to, to stay with us. We'll be back on Sunday with a dynamic word from, uh, from our pastor, Darren Martin. And, and as we're going on the continuing on the kingdom family. Um, and, and also, let me put a plug in. Our, I am so excited that uh, next month, October 24th and 25th, we will be celebrating our second church anniversary. I am, um, yes, praise God. I am excited about that. Um, our, our, uh, our flyer that we have for our event has reached almost 10,000 people. Now, listen, 
Um, I know that ain't got nothing to do with us. That's all about our, our dynamic speaker, Dr. Yvonne Capehart, that's going to come and bless us uh, coming all the way from, from Florida. But I, I wanted to let you know to make sure that you come into the Zoom early to make sure, I see it, I see it, to come into the Zoom early uh, to make sure that you get your spot because I want to make sure that as many as the Carpenters Church family is in the Zoom because we're going to have a great time. We're going to get together outside, physically distancing with masks on on Saturday and have some fun and fellowship. And then on Sunday, we're going to have a great service. And then guess what? After the service, we're going to have a virtual banquet. I am just geeked about that, man. It, it, <laughs> we're going to do some new things. Hey, Amen. Marshanique says, it has been prophesied over me teaching and prophecy. I have confidence in teaching, but prophecy, I honestly need more teaching. I've experienced things pertaining to prophecy, but I don't know if it was fear or lack of knowledge why I have no confidence in that gift. Yeah, and, and that's one thing that is, is normal. Whenever you are in it, when you're dealing with a gift in its infancy, it's, you're going to lack confidence. Confidence builds over time and over experience. But don't worry, I got you. I got you. Um, because I definitely see that gift in you as well. And, and, and I see more than that. We'll talk offline about that. Um, but we're, but I, I trust that you're coming into the Carpenter Churches at the right time so that those things can be developed. And it's go, you're going to start to see an explosion as God is defining some things in your life. So um, I, I want to thank those of you that's on Facebook. We're going to go ahead and close down the Facebook and continue on with our church online on the Zoom. So for those of you that want to join the Zoom, come on in. But thank you for those of you that have been watching us on our Facebook. Uh, do me a favor. If you have not shared, it's not too late. Go ahead and share this broadcast and, and bless somebody else if you've been blessed. And if you haven't yet, I want you to like our page and follow us and subscribe to our YouTube channel. God bless you. We love you. And you guys have a great night.